Peace everyone, Unmask Art here. Welcome back to another oil painting video. Um, so I have not mixed my paint yet. I wanted to talk you through a little bit of that if you're interested in either joining the Evolve program or if you just want to learn a little bit about oil painting. Uh, you can get started very easily and I'm just gonna show you how simple it is to actually just pick up a few oil paints a couple little supplies, you know, a paintbrush, some canvas paper, and you can get right into oil painting. It's not it's not as difficult as it often comes across. So I wanted to sort of start this live stream off a slightly slightly backwards from where I normally do. Usually I just start with my paint and I just start painting. So uh the first thing when you join the Evolve program and you start off in block one, you get four gray tones of paint. And these are the four tones that you use for a very long time throughout the program. Only having four different tones keeps everything very simple. Can't really overthink just four different paint colors. So this is the four tones laid out on the palette paper. This is palette paper that's also supplied in the program. And then you also get linseed oil. Linseed oil is probably one of the most commonly used oils uh, in oil painting. It's relatively cheap and um, what the linseed oil is used for in the beginning, there's actually a couple applications that you can use oils for um, additional oils. But when paint comes out of the paint tubes, you have to know that it's not it's not in the best consistency for just putting it on your palette and start painting. Uh, it can be used that way, but for sort of the easier moving paints, uh, you you want to add some oil to your paint to get sort of a uh, less of a toothpaste because the oil paint tends to be kind of thicker when it comes straight out of the tube So I'm going to add a few drops of linseed oil here to the paint and What that will do is it'll take it from like that toothpaste texture that kind of feels clumpy in the brush and make it more like I'm Trying to think of the a good Good consistency comparison. Um, let's see, I'd, I'd say it's like like a, a a cream almost, but with better viscosity. I'm gonna start mixing this up. And maybe I'll think of a food that it reminds me of. But essentially, essentially, it it becomes m more. Uh, fluid becomes more fluid so from toothpaste to more of a fluid And that really helps you uh, That really helps you apply it to your canvases and everything a lot easier and It's smoother. That's the other thing if you want to paint with texture you want you know palette knife painting or really thick brush stroke kind of textured oil paintings, then additional oil added to the paint is not really the direction that you would look. You'd actually add the uh, the wax. You'd go the wax option to make the paint really, really clumpy. And you'd want the paint to become thicker. So there's there's wax that you can add to your oil paint as well. That is the direction you want want to go. So here you can start to see the paint becoming a little bit smoother. Still can't quite think of a food that it reminds me of, but it's just it it, it even looks more like paint when you when you start mixing more oil into it. In my opinion, it's very it's very creamy satisfying to just mix paint as well. I like to paint. I think I'm going to add 
maybe another two drops of oil here. I would always recommend adding less oil first. Uh, the more oil you add, of course, the sort of uh, drippier the paint will become. It will actually be, start to become harder to work with, and it will also become more translucent. And that's another way that you can use oil. You can actually use a lot of oil in the paint uh, to create a fat glaze of color. That's a bit more of an advanced technique, so I wouldn't recommend thinking too much about it now if you're getting into oil painting, but there's several applications for oil. All right, that paint is looking very good. What, what I tend to look for when I'm mixing oil in my oil paint is when I move my palette knife through the paint and I sort of wipe it off, is the paint becomes very, very smooth. It has, it doesn't, it doesn't leave any texture in the paint. So I'm looking for it to be like a, almost, almost a melted butter, like a slightly melted butter. That is what it reminds me of, like a really soft butter. I'll just use a, a tissue to clean the excess paint off of my palette knife. I just do this, fold the tissue around it. And then important thing to note is that when you remove the, t the paint, you also need to remove it from the edges. You can see here, you use the edges and you can see that all that dark paint was hiding right on the blade of the palette knife. And you wanna make sure you get that off before you start mixing your, your other colors. Hey Lair, uh, Alexandru, Claire, Rain, Nushka, Nolani, Ozzy, Lara, hello, good to see all of you. Hope you're having a lovely Friday. Decided to change up the time for today's live stream. And as usual, if you have any questions for me, I'm happy to, happy to answer your questions. I'm going to just sort of cover the basic mixing of the oil paint and then a couple little planning tips and then also a few brush tips as well. So this one looks pretty good. I don't think I need to add any more oil here. Every, every paint is going to be slightly different from a tube, even if it is from the same brand and even the same color. You could, you could order two tubes of paint from the same company and they would come out of the tube slightly different or even significantly different, in fact. Um, a lot of it has to do with, you know, the age of the paint, how long it's been sitting on the shelf at like the retail store or in the warehouse or whatever. It could depend on the humidity that the paint was created in. A lot of, a lot of different factors can influence the way the, the paint feels. And so there's almost no instance where I would recommend just taking the tube of paint, squeezing it onto your palette, and then immediately using it. Because uh, it's, just, it's just more often than not that you're going to end up with multiple, multiple consistent or multiple inconsistencies in paint texture. And mixing like a heavy body paint into a very soft, creamy paint, essentially the softer paint is just going to be dominated by the more textured one. They won't mix. They won't mix very easily. And that's sort of what you want to make sure that you get. You want to get um, a uniform consistency between the different colors of paint that you use 
so that when you mix them, they mix consistently. I don't, I don't know if this initial step was ever uh, explained to me when I started oil painting. I started oil painting um, about 10 years ago. In, in about, uh, come, come next spring, it will be 10 years since I started oil painting. And it was sort of just squeeze the paint out, maybe add a little bit of uh, paint thinner to the paint. Um, whether you add paint thinner or paint, add oil, there's a there's difference there. Uh, paint thinner is going to give you a more translucent effect. But you can use you you can sort of use them interchangeably a little bit. But the other aspect of using oil as opposed to thinner is that when you add oil to your paint, it extends the drying time. Now linseed linseed oil is not the the oil that extends the drying time as significant as some other oils. Different oils have different drying temperatures, or not temperatures, but different drying times. And so um, that's, that's the other thing, difference uh, between using oil to soften your paints versus using paint thinner. A lot of people use paint thinner uh, one of the things that actually surprised me, but now doesn't surprise me about the Evolve program, is that in in no way do they use paint thinner. Um, and you know, usually when you first learn how to use oil paint and get familiar with it, those first initial things sort of stick with you, and using paint thinner to thin my paint and clean my brushes was something that I just just sort of inherently thought was part of oil painting. And the techniques um, taught in the Evolve program don't involve that at all, which um, I was sort of surprised by because I was always taught to clean my brushes with with paint thinner. and. I never really liked that because paint thinner is oftentimes, if not always, um, you know, not very environmentally friendly. And you have to take certain precautions, you know, not breathing it in. And, you know, there's just a bunch of chemicals and stuff like that. Whereas oil, still not very environmentally friendly oil, but uh, it's not as bad as just straight paint thinner, you know? I think I'm gonna add just a, one more drop of oil here. This paint is sometimes the uh, as the paint gets lighter, it uh, tends to be a bit thicker, darker colors. This lighter gray here is a bit thicker than the darker shades of gray that come in the set. Yeah, so the uh, the way that they circumvent the use of solvent in the Evolve program, of course, we we only mix our paint with oil uh, in order to soften it, and then for cleaning your brushes, you simply just use soap. Um, you just use a bar of soap and you know th those those soaps they they act as a solvent for breaking down the oil and then it just you know just dissolves away out of the brush once you clean it enough so anyway there is my prepared paint so now i will go through a little bit of the planning stages that 
the program sort of introduces to you. Uh, one of the things is that all of the all of the projects in the first block are pre prepared for you. They send you the printout of the line art here that you see. And they also send you these really nice um, reference photos. Um, so you know what you're painting. And they set they set some pretty strict rules in the very beginning to keep things as simple as possible. And then as you work through the program, they introduce new rules, still staying very strict, in order to introduce you to new ideas, new concepts, and new techniques that allow you to build on the foundation that you start with. It's very, very, it's very uh, well put together. So what I do with the reference photo is I map out the values on the line art paper that they give you. You use this line art paper along with uh, transfer paper to transfer the lines over to your canvas paper. I give you the canvas paper as well. Um, generally, I'm not a huge fan of canvas, but this is actually quite quite nice canvas paper. It has a very shallow texture. I'm not a huge fan of texture. Uh, I when I oil paint, I generally like to do do it on wood panel with um, like gesso sanded at like four or five hundred grit sandpaper. So it's it's much smoother than than canvas, but this canvas paper is um, quite nice. And so I map out all the values, and then I just take the paint that I prepared and sort of just uh, paint by numbers, essentially. And when you start to fill things in, uh, the way that it's broken down in the program is just to fill it in flat color. They supply you with all the paint brushes, and the paint brushes are quite nice. You know, they're they're a good quality paint brush. All of the supplies actually that they supply you with are excellent quality. I shouldn't even describe them as just good quality. They're excellent quality. The old Holland brand is it's like two hundred years old or something around there. Find the date. It's might even be older than I think, but yeah, I'm not I'm not sure. I don't see the date on when it was around. I know it's it, I know it's a very old company and so the quality the quality of their products is without question. Uh so now that I have everything laid out and prepared I'm going to just start with my darkest value. So I just get a little bit of the paint on my brush. About that much, not too much. And let's just uh, let's just start right over here on this shadow. And what I like to do is I like to get my lines first. So anywhere where I have a sharp edge, I use the brush flat like this, flat like this, and I just work that paint up to the edge. And when I fill the paint, when I fill the brush up with paint, I can zoom in a little bit. I always fill it up on both sides. So I always switch like that. That way when I'm working on one side of the brush, I can simply flip it over, get a little bit more paint. And I just slowly work that paintbrush back and forth. I sort of feel like this paint is just a little bit too sticky. Yeah, 
So you can you can pretty immediately tell if your paint is still too heavy. Um, and that is when you're actually painting with it, it feels like the bristles of your brush want to stick to the canvas. So I'm actually going to add two more drops of oil to my dark value here because I just don't like the way that it feels on the paper. It feels a bit too heavy. And what that is doing is it's, it's making it harder. It's making it more difficult for me to actually move the paint around on the canvas. It will probably take you some time to get familiar with the consistency of the paint that you really, really want to work with. But what I would do as a good experiment is take a, you know, a few little, few little squeezes of paint, take one little drop of paint that is just directly from the tube, just straight out of the tube, and then add get a few more drops and add a little bit more oil into each little blob of paint. Mix each little blob up and just on a little test canvas, test it out, see what it feels like and see if you can tell the difference because the difference is quite significant on whether or not it's enjoyable to paint with really because when you get a nice soft paint it is just so much more enjoyable to work with than the he the thick heavy stuff that you'll oftentimes uh, get right out of the tube Hey there, Elena and Mima. Good to see you. All right, now that, that paint there should be much easier to work with. Much creamier. I can just, I can already feel the difference. It's so much easier to work with. When the, when the paint is easier to move across the canvas with your brush, because like I said, if it's too heavy, you're going to feel the bristles of the brush sticking to the, the canvas. It's quite, quite obvious. Now, generally, I don't work with my canvas flat. I'm only working with it flat today because I wanted to show mixing the paint and talk through that process. Too much stuff on my desk. Right. I think I had a question in there. Uh, yeah, Robin. Rain, I, I don't know which name, I don't know which one to tell you. Um, what are some really great things about living in Poland? Um, there's, there's a number of reasons I really like living in Poland. I'd say, I'd say one of my favorite things about Poland is that it has, it's really easy to travel around because of public transportation and the bus systems and the trains. Everything is quite convenient in that way, especially in comparison to America, because coming from America, we didn't we don't have anything that even remotely compares. I mean we have we have like charter buses and in bigger cities there's buses and even subways in a few places, but uh in comparison it doesn't match up at all. Not to mention, you know, the the, trans, the public transportation in America um, is disgusting. And anybody that lives in a larger city knows exactly what I'm talking about, and I don't need to go into detail and further. 
but it's it's disgusting and everybody knows it. Whereas here, I've never come across anything remotely like that. Um, the other thing, people are really nice in Poland. Uh, I like I like the friendliness of the culture. Everybody says hello to each other. You know, you walk across, uh, you come across somebody, you say hello. Uh, you know, I lived in Seattle for about four years and uh, just never, I don't think I ever came across a friendly, a friendly person just randomly on the street. Not once in my life or once in those four years, I mean. And even though I live in, I live in the third largest city in Poland, Katowice. I mean, I don't live in the center of it, but I live close enough to, I live close enough. And um, it's just, it's sort of, it was one thing that stuck out to me when I first came here. You walk into a store and people just say hello to you. Um, I I leave my flat and get into an elevator, and one of my many neighbors that lives in the building as well, they get in the elevator and say hello to you. And um, the other thing, like, say I'm coming home or something, I get in the elevator, I live on the last floor, so... Oftentimes, when I get in the elevator with somebody else, they get on of get off of a floor earlier than me. But they get on, we say hello to one another, they get off, and they say goodbye. And even though we don't have a conversation in between, it's just, it's sort of, it's just a cultural thing. It's something that exists, and and it was surprising to me when I first came across it. Uh, one of the things here is this is an extra dark value, this little spot here, and also this is extra dark. So I'm going to actually just ignore some of that line art and continue on here. So right now I haven't really hit any spots that become tricky but I'm about to, and I'll show you a couple little tricks with the brush, because the reality is that you don't really need that many brushes. I use about four brushes when oil painting. Um, I've only really ever used about four brushes, and that's just because uh, this is a filbert brush here, and it's one of my favorite brushes. It's pretty much what I use exclusively in just about everything I paint because um, it is very versatile. So when you get you get this sharp blade on the, from the side and nice flat, soft um, from the flat side. And so here I have a pinch point where these lines come down to a very sharp point. And so I'm going to Instead of working the paintbrush like this, I'm just going to turn it about 45 degrees and come at this at an angle here and get this line here. And that's going to give me a nice sharp line very easily. I'm not even, not even trying. And before I get to the very sharp part, I'll just load my paint into the brush and get a nice clean tip. And then I will come down right where I need to. And I'll just gradually work that up. And you can get, if you have really good brush control, you can get super fine lines. Let's see how thin of a line I can get here. Yeah, I don't know, you see how thin that line is? very thin. And you can get those consistently with good brush control. So it's it's 
very easy to get sharp edges, fine points with such a brush. And when you need to get the corners, you do the same thing, just turn it vertical like this. And you can work your way up slowly to that corner. Part of part of getting good at this is really just getting familiar with the paintbrush and its distance from the paper. And over time, you'll just get more familiar with it. It's very much like relearning how to use a pencil in the sense that um, just you'll you have a little bit harder time knowing when the paintbrush is actually touching the canvas. And when you need really fine points and fine details, you're already touching the canvas very, very lightly. Uh, so would a filbert brush not be good for odorless mineral spirits? Um, are you referring to the use uh, in regards to blending colored pencils? Uh, the thing with uh, brushes are sort of like paper in the sense that there's no like best brush. Uh, I like I like the filbert brush personally, because of the reasons that I just explained and demonstrated, is that you have a lot of you have a lot of control with this brush and it's very versatile. I don't like to have to change brushes and and all that stuff. I, I like to just use the same brush and and not have to have like 16 brushes um, in order to paint. I like to keep it simple. And so the filbert brush allows me to do that. But if I were to use it for blending colored pencils, um, it would be fine. It, it, it wouldn't be like a bad brush to use, I don't think. I've personally never uh, used a filbert brush for an extended period of time while blending with solvent. And so I couldn't give you like a definitive don't use that kind of brush kind of answer. I would say if I would I would recommend testing it out for yourself. And if you like it, then great. If you don't, then you know, try a different brush. Oh hey there, Dottie. And Alicia. Sorry I missed you. I have a much harder time paying attention to chat uh, when I'm oil painting. Maybe that's why I never felt like it was the best medium for me to live stream. There's, there's just some activities that I have a hard time uh, balancing the, my attention. Like colored pencils and pastels, I've sort of gotten really quite good at, but oil painting and digital art are two things that I just, I really have the hardest time with. I've tried, I've tried doing digital art a couple times, a couple live streams doing digital art, but at the end of it, I'm just like, I can't, I can't do the digital art stuff. When I'm playing in, in Photoshop, it's just really hard to uh, keep a good balance between doing something and and also reading chat. And I think what it is with the digital art anyway is that I have to read what I'm doing. I read menus and everything. And I can't read two things at once. That's just too difficult.
So if anybody has any questions um, regarding the process here, by all means, ask away. Try to break it down as best I can. Yeah, my I'm I won't be humble about my brush control because it's impeccable. I will be humble about everything else in my life, but not my brush control. I don't I don't take a lot of pride in really anything, but brush control is something that I do take quite a bit of pride in. I like, I like the precision that I can, that I can demonstrate my brushes. And I guess pencils as well. Pretty good pencil control. I know you probably can't tell too well, but hopefully you can a little bit see just how easy this paint glides across the canvas. It's that property that you know you have good mixed paint. You have a nice, nice soft body paint. It should be effortless to move across the canvas. You should you should be able to move your brush with the paint and it just sort of feel like it covers up the canvas with no like dragging. There's, there's really not a lot of friction between my paintbrush and the canvas that is making the paint stick to it. It is simply just having that proper viscosity of, of the paint. Like melted butter. You would have used a double zero brush. Yeah, yeah, then getting getting familiar with uh, this shape of a brush, I'd say is very beneficial. This is, it's a little bit harder working on a flat surface right now for me, but it's not too bad. I'm also kind of far away from my canvas. I don't, I don't have the best angle vision wise. Probably another reason I don't like, uh, I've never, never tended to live streaming, working with oil and, and just painting in general because the distance, you know, trying to keep my head out of the camera frame and then also keeping myself uh, in front of my microphone. Both those, both those things sort of complicate an already um, difficult thing to do.
not to imply that it's very difficult because like I said what I'm doing right now anybody could do uh, very easily and that's one of the things that I really like about the way everything is presented in the Evolve program It's been it's been really fun working through these paintings. Uh, I haven't done a lot of painting this week, but uh, I've done a lot over the past month, so I need I need a little bit of a break. I wanted to do this stream a little bit later than I normally do my streams, just to see how people like it. Uh, and then I also have a date with my wife, so I, I can't stream for too long today. Uh, since you don't paint, what are the advantages, positives of working upwards on an easel? Easel. Well, actually, it's this. It's pretty much the same between painting and drawing. Um, you shouldn't draw flat either. Uh, it causes parallax. So when you you definitely shouldn't draw flat because. Uh, you can you can color and paint flat as long as you didn't draw the thing flat, but it's still I wouldn't advise it. It's much more comfortable. A lot of people are they're used to working flat, and then they think that because it's comfortable for them or that they're used to it, that's the best way to work. But if you get yourself comfortable working uh, at even a shallow angle, like twenty. To 25 degree angle um, it's very good for your posture when you work at an angle it's much much better and your your back will thank you in the long run it really will whether it's drawing or painting um, with painting I would say it's a little bit more important than the other mediums because when you work at an angle, especially a steeper angle, uh, when I paint, I prefer to work at a much steeper a steeper angle. I don't like to draw at real real steep angles. It feels it feels uh, a lot less comfortable than a shallower angle, like thirty degrees. That's sort of my my favorite, like thirty degree angle for for drawing. Getting a little off topic, but. Um, the reason I like the um, a, the steeper angle with painting is it keeps your hands and arms off of your surface. It's you can't really rest your elbow in your paint if you're working at an angle. So it's that plus the plus the posture. So that's that's probably what I would say is most important. Spend a, you spend a lot of time sitting as is. If you work at a steeper angle, working larger with paint or even drawing for that matter, you can stand up in a lot of if you get the if you have the easel for it. Standing can be an experience in itself. I did a lot. I did all standing pretty much when I was learning to oil paint first time but I do prefer sitting in some cases, but I like the versatility of being able to stand and walk away. Sometimes when you glue yourself to a seat, um, it's, it's harder to remember to walk away. It's really 
quite beneficial to be able to walk around while you're working because you can take a step back a little bit easier and you're sort of more aware of it. It's a, it, it just feels like it's the last thing on your mind when you're sitting comfortably and drawing or painting. And taking a break, walking away is, it's so, so important. It's so beneficial to your work, really. And I actually, it's funny because today I was doing just that. Um, I was prepping the, uh, the reference photo for the upcoming pastel project that will start on Monday. I finalized the, the reference. So I, I fixed the whales. I took out the dragon, did the final touches. And the, the way that I did it, I mean, I, I worked on it for a little bit and then I walked away. Every time that I came back, I was like, uh, that needs to change. And I did that like 11 times for sure. And each time that I walked away and came back, I was like, oh, I can fix that. And then it, you know, I finally walked away and I came back and I was like, I like that. That looks good. <clears throat> How long does it take me to paint a picture this size? Um, I'd say about five hours. Because I like to, I like to be very precise with all the lines and edges. If I was a little bit looser, I, I could loosen up. I could loosen up and not be so so absolute with all of my my brush lines and everything. Because <clears throat> the uh, the thing with the oil paint here is that if I go outside the line, I can actually correct it in the other direction with a different color of paint. Uh, so if I were to not have the cleanest edge here that I'm creating right now, then when I paint this edge, I can use that paint to push into this a little bit without actually blending anything, actually just sort of moving the paint aside for the other color and clean up the edge that way. But that's not the way that I like to do it. I like to get it right the first time. And I don't have too much trouble doing it that way anyway. I can get this clean edge quite easily. And then when I go come back through with my other color, I just do the same thing. And it's actually easier because there's less, there's less give to the edge. So if I get the edge correct the first time, when I come back with the second color to do the other edge, uh, the paint sort of creates a very delicate barrier uh, that allows me to sort of just push the paint right up to that edge and then I don't have to worry about it. It's just a nice sharp edge. One of the other things that I like to do when I get to corners like this, uh, I turn the, turn the paintbrush and I sort of work at the, the angle there and get that tip, get the point of the corner. And then, and then I just work the edge right up to it, sort of like that. You guys can see it. Just making sure I was still in, still in frame there. And, and then it's just easier to get these sides working up to that corner. And now you have a nice sharp corner, and you can just continue moving. Uh, the other thing that I do that is actually sort of similar to colored pencils. Uh, one of the things with colored pencils that I'm always talking about is that as you're coloring stuff in, just always rotate 
your pencil so you keep it sharper longer. The thing that I do with with my paint brushes is that I only do a few brush strokes and then I go right back to my paint and I flatten my brush. So I'm constantly sharpening the edge of my brush. Even if even if it, I'm not really adding a lot of paint back into it because most of the time I'm not. Um, it's just good to always have a sharp brush. Uh, this is another thing that I do a lot. I actually do this with pretty much anything I'm working with, whether it's painting or colored pencils, but I always create bridges with my hand. So you can't really tell from this angle, but I'm using my two fingers and my thumb. The space underneath my arm is, I'm not touching anything. Um, and I create like a tripod with my hand. And then now I can rest my wrist, my right wrist, on my arm. Uh, there's a tool that people use for this. I don't remember what it's called because you have, as long as you have a second arm, you don't, I don't think you ever really need that tool. But I do this with colored pencil. I do this with painting a lot. And this allows you to rest your right arm so it's not floating. And when you do that, you of course have a lot more control in your wrist and fingers. Because now if you, if you hold your arm up, and I talked about this I think last week, you hold your arm up, and right now my right arm is totally floating, the only thing holding up is my shoulder. You can, I don't know if you can see, I'm holding my hand and my brush as still as I possibly can. And you can see just how much it's moving. It's because you just don't have a lot of control all the way down to your fingertips from your shoulder. It's just not the best option. So if you relax your arm, now I can hold my paintbrush. And you can see just how much still I am at my fingertips. And that gives you just that much more. Uh, if I was working on an easel, would I be rotating the canvas? Yes. Yes. I mean, there's just no reason not to. It's just so much easier to get particular angles when the canvas is floating. There's even canvases, or not canvases, um, easels that are designed with like a built-in Lazy Susan. So you can clamp in your painting and then you can, instead of picking up and rotating the canvas and only having, only having four distinct angles that you can set it on, you get the little Lazy Susan, you can have full 360 range. That's about the only reason I occasionally paint flat Like I'll paint the, these colors here, the fact that I'm not doing any blending whatsoever right now, and I won't do any blending until I have the canvas completely covered, because that's the rules in the program. Um, but I like to, I like to be able to just freely spin everything and when I work at an angle, I don't have that flexibility. Unless I work at a shallow angle, which sometimes I will, I'll also do.
So here's another perfect example of a very tight triangle. So I'm, I'm really far away from my canvas, but let's see how well I can do here. So pretty small shape, not the smallest one that I've painted in the series of paintings that I've done for the program so far, but just another demonstration of what you can do with a single brush when it comes to very small shapes. Got to do the same thing over here. This side is actually harder. Gotta constantly keep your brush nice and sharp. There we go. Now I can just fill in this shape. Righty. Well, um, I'm actually not going to be able to paint too much more. I'm going to fill in this last shape here. I still have some more of this dark value to apply elsewhere. But like I said, I scheduled a long overdue date with my lovely wife, and she has already waited in partially disappointed with the fact that I decided to stream at this time. <laughs> so, the last thing I want to do is be a disappointment. So, I will take any last questions that you guys have. Yes, painting on a flat surface also diminishes, you know, a bit of your natural visibility. Sometimes it, you know, your lights, depending on the angle, can cause extra glare when you're working on a flat surface. Because it will bounce up into your eyes as opposed to working at an angle where it will generally bounce down to the floor as opposed to up. Unless for whatever reason you work with lights at the same height as your head. Let's see, I got... Um... I guess I can do one more small. I'll keep going for a little bit long, but I'm just going to do this last shape here with extreme dark. I 
I should do a tour tutorial that all you need to paint is one brush. Yeah, yeah. I mean, other brushes are certainly helpful. I won't pretend like you only need one brush, but you can certainly get away with a whole lot with just one brush. That is definitely true. This is a number six. Wait, or is it a nine? Is it a six or a nine? I can't tell. I think it's a six. I think I think you should look at it like this. It looks more like a six than a nine because of the curvature of the pail. But um, yeah, this is a number six filbert brush. And it is quite nice to work with. I think I think somebody asked me last week if I'm not mistaken which brushes that I use for painting um the filbert brush pretty much my main brush um uh, do do a majority of like filling in and blending all the base layers and stuff like that with filbert and then I will use like a number two, maybe maybe a number one round for like details later on. But I use, um, it's sort of a hybrid round in the sense that it's sort of a, uh, a liner brush. So a, a long, it's long bristle round brush. It's sort of between just a standard round brush and a liner brush. Some liner brushes have like ridiculously absurdly long bristles. Um, I've never used one of those, but um, I do like I do like the the liner brush to be a little bit on the longer side of the bristles because you can use that for hairs. You can get your paint really, really loose. Um, load up a like a number two round brush and paint paint individual hairs. And then, of course, the bristles aren't so loose that you can't you can't do like small details with a good control. And then I use, uh, I'll use like a flat brush. I always have like a, like a two inch, two inch flat brush for filling in really large areas, but I don't really count that brush as being one of the main brushes. But the other one is a, a fan brush, like a soft bristled fan brush is also really, really helpful in many blending situations but i would say close to 95 percent of my paintings is done with a single filbert brush i'm not uh i'm not a brush snob when it comes to painting some people some people they have like thousands of brushes they got like you know just every single different kind of brush and they just swear by all of them you know what i mean you're going to come across painters like that and there's nothing wrong with that like if you like if you if you like to use a bunch of different brushes you know, more power to you you're not wrong you are just i mean in my opinion you're just wasting money but <laughs> if you like it by all means do what you like I would never want to stop any from anybody from doing what they like. So there's a lot of things people like that I think are just a waste of money. But 
I would never want to stop him from that. Anyways, I hope that you guys are enjoying the live stream, by the way. Um, hopefully, I'll encourage a few of you to pick up the paintbrush if you haven't before. Uh, you don't need a million tools to get started with oil painting. You don't need to go to the store and spend $600 on oil paint supplies. Realistically, you could grab a tube of white, a tube of black, a small bottle of oil, one paintbrush. If you, if you, I mean, if you really, really wanted to go super basic, you could get one paintbrush. Uh, I'd, I'd stick with the synthetic paintbrushes, by the way. Don't look into any of the animal hair ones. It's unnecessary. Um, and then get a, get a pack of canvas paper. Uh, y you don't need to use the palette paper that I showed you there at the beginning that I mixed my paint on. This is just supplied by Evolve program. Uh, what I've always preferred and still prefer is just glass. I just I usually would just take like an old um, picture frame, take the glass out, and then um, put paper on the back side of it so that I see the paper color through the glass and just mix right there on the glass. And then you can just wipe it off after you're done and just use it forever. I have my glass palettes actually in my drawer over there. Um, I, don't, I don't know why I don't use them. I guess I just use this palette paper because it was supplied to me and it's better than it just sitting in the drawer. So use it until I don't have it anymore and switch back to my glass palette. Glass is always better in my opinion. Best palettes are glass. Uh, what kind of oil? This is the Old Holland brand of oil paint. I would say, um, like if you're, if you're thinking about, you know, picking up a couple tubes of paint, like I said, you can start with black and white and just mix all your values and just you know, get familiar with the medium. You don't, I would I would stay clear of any sets because if you're looking for you know really really affordability not getting into um, spending more than like 30 bucks to get started with oil painting I think that's a great price and 30 bucks get a get a pack of like 10 or 20 pieces of canvas paper, two tubes of paint, maybe three brushes, like if you wanted to. Um, then, then yeah, 30 bucks is probably about the range. You, you're gonna wanna spend the most money on the two tubes of paint though. I'd say if you're spending less than $8 per tube, then the you're just gonna get like really degrading paint and it's just, Good paint when it comes to oil paint is very much the same when it comes to um, colored pencils. I actually forgot a little bit of my line art here, so I need to sketch this out.
yes, linseed oil. Um, there's there's a lot of different kinds of oils that people use in their oil paint. Linseed oil, I would say, is probably going to be the cheapest one to find. Um, and it's just the most common. Like maybe it's because it's the cheapest cheapest oil, but um, yeah, it will slow down the drying process a little bit, not like a huge amount, but it will, um, you can use it to make the paint creamier, easier to work with. Like you, that brush stroke is a perfect example. Like as I move this brush across the paper, it just fills in the texture of the canvas. And that is because the paint was softened and creamier and that allows that allows it to transfer easier and also seep into the texture of the canvas so that's why you want to work with that softer paint unless you're going for a a heavier paint texture like palette knife or something along those lines then you're going to want to get um, a wax for that stuff because that will speed up the drying time. Um, anytime you do those really thick stuff, you want to add something that's going to speed the the drying time up. Those those big globs can take a while to dry. Otherwise, solvents um, speed up the drying time a little bit. All right, last little bit right here. I'm going to fill in and then I'm going to call it a day. Other thing about Gilbert, that rounded edge, rounded edge really makes it easier to get rounded shapes as well. So you can get sharp points, rounded shapes, and everything in between. Alrighty, I know that uh, what I've done up to this point is not what most would consider the most exciting thing. But just like any medium, there's always that initial first few things that you just can't uh, you can't escape. And even though they're not exciting, they lead to exciting things. So hopefully, a few of those tips, you know, something that you learned today. But, um, I will. I don't know if I'll if I'll be painting next Friday. I might. Um, no promises, I'll let you know during the week, but uh, I am starting new pastel and colored pencil project next week, so it's very likely that I don't, because <laughs> there's a lot that goes behind the scenes as far as starting a new project, um, both in pastel and colored pencil, and I'm doing two in a week, so the idea that I'd be not taking next Friday off is pretty slim. But anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's brief live stream. So I went over the hour. I promised my wife I wouldn't. Um, it was nice seeing all of you, and I hope that you have a great weekend, and I will see you on Monday. Take care. Peace.